Welcome to Strategy Battle Gamers to another GBHL YouTube video. You hear me host GBHL Damien, and this is the first ever episode of the two time zones. Oh, yes. Sorry, probably wrong show. So, um, yeah, here we are at the start of a new series um, on the GBHL YouTube channel. And it's going to be something very, very different. So, um, let me explain what we're doing with this. Um, as you know, um, I think we've been doing alright here on the G Ritual Podcast of late, we've been getting some more content out, but um, it, over the last six months we've had less content on there, so we're always on the lookout for um, ways to make more content and have uh, different ideas and different series and those kind of things on. And um, part of the problem with that is getting together with people. Um, I think that people have kind of paired off largely to sort of Jamie and Harry, Stephen, James and myself and Tom, and if you ever can't meet up with those partners, it then makes the whole, ooh, yellow it then makes the whole thing a bit um, tougher. So um, myself and Tom have kind of hopefully uh, got back into the swing of things with the plans here. Um, he's been away with work the last couple of weeks, but we will be um, back, uh, I think we're recording next Tuesday. So uh, we're currently on the 28th. So the Friday, that about the 7th of October, should have a plan here, all, being, all things considered. But yeah, it's been a bit um, hard to get together with people. And of course, you don't want to do too much content on your own because I think it becomes a bit stale. So earlier this evening, I'll give you some idea of when this is, it's currently Wednesday evening, Wednesday the 28th, and I'm hoping you're watching this on Thursday. Um, I was scrolling through some of my favourite YouTube channels, and I came across uh, this video. I don't know if you can see that on the screen, I'll move it out of the way. I hope you can see that. Maybe just a, a, a cheeky little pivot. Come on, there you go. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but this is the Roundtable Discussions episode 14, Taylor's Hobby Vlog from um, Blackfire Productions. Blackfire Productions are, um, is a YouTube channel largely run by um, Taylor Sinster and uh, Adam Marcel in Canada. Um, and um, I'm a big fan of the channel, um, I watch a lot of their stuff. And it's fair to say, I think, that of late, um, over the last couple of years, the Brits have struck up a kind of really, really good, strong relationship with the Canadians. Um, we, we first met at 2015 at Nova, met some of the Canadian guys there, and then kind of that, some of the, some of those came over for um, Articon 2015. Is that right? Yeah. No, 2016. Then we went back to Nova 2016, and now they've just come over to um, Articon um, again. And that was always with our kind of GBHL crew, but then... This year we didn't go to Nova, but um, Sam, Jeffrey, and Dan Entwistle did go over to Nova, and I think they immediately kind of hit it off with the Canadians in the same way, and they became uh, very much honorary Canadians. And actually, uh, you might have noticed I'm wearing my on Ontario Hobbit Adventures SPG T-shirt, which is of course um, Ontario Hobbit Adventures is another um, cracking YouTube channel. I think largely run by Jason, and um, you might want to check that one out. Ontario Hobbit Adventures. Um, they do some really cool stuff on there. Um, including the weekly show Pints and Paints, which is just brilliant, uh, sort of 20 minute show, of just lovely guy chatting um, about the hobby, so um, give them a watch if you can. And yeah, so they came back with their their t-shirts and very generously, I think for my previous uh, work with the Canadians, um, I got one as well, so awesome, thank you very much for this guys, um, it's lovely to have this over here. So yeah, we've always had this, I don't know quite why, but we've always had this um, great relationship with Canadians, maybe it's because we... Um, both in the Commonwealth, yay the Queen, etc. But um, whenever they guys came over for Articon, I've always hosted them for a couple of days down here in London, myself and Tom, and some of the other guys have taken them out for curries and fish and chips and that sort of stuff. So it always feels like we've had a pretty good relationship with them. So that's cool. And it's something we're always keen to um, develop, which is obviously why I've got my uh, Ontario Hobbit Adventures. Uh, uh, sorry, it's not Ontario Hobbit Adventures, it's my Toronto mug uh, that was kindly brought over by Garrett and Andrew Brock um, this year's Nova. So, yeah, it's a, it's a great relationship we've got with them. I don't quite know how it's happened, but it's really, really cool. And I was watching this video uh, on Blackfire Productions, and it's Taylor. And he's Roundtable Discussions is their kind of chat show. They do sort of infrequently, and he was sort of saying that he finds it really hard to paint, and so what helps him paint is uh, when he's talking to someone. And um, because he didn't have anyone there, he decided to do a video that he'd talk to the community, but he, he didn't know how regularly he was going to do these videos and he didn't know what he was going to call the segment or anything like that. So I then had a mad idea, messaged him and said, what if I now reply to your video? 
and uh, we looped Adam in from Blackfire as well and he really liked the idea and so this was literally three hours ago um, we were chatting about this and knocking ideas about and that is what has resulted in this video uh, the first episode of the two time zones and what we're going to be doing and we, I have no idea if this is going to work um, is Taylor is going to record a video um, like he has done, like a little block vlog I'll watch it, hopefully all you guys will watch it I'll then record a vlog um, responding to the stuff he says I guess and kind of chatting about our own kind of experiences over here and that sort of stuff and then put that online you guys can then comment on that if you want he'll then watch that one he does his vlog and it bounces back and basically we're going to be posting a conversation over the Atlantic um, it might be awful it might be dreadful I have no idea if this is going to work but I think it's quite cool and maybe this could be really good fun and so that's what this series basically is there isn't a topic um, we're just going to have a chat um, Taylor was using it to get some painting done I'm going to do the same so I'm going to get cracking um, I am currently working on Barlin champion of Erebor don't know if that's focusing um, he's the next champion that I'm working on as I went my way through them at Picks by James um, on his last speak friend in question he, he chose the next one for me to do so I'm going to crack on with him but it's not a hobby vlog you're not really going to see the model um, I'm just going to kind of chat a bit and then by all means put I don't know if we'll respond to comments or whatever but by all means put comments down below and we'll then direct Taylor to them and then you go and watch um, the next episode which we'll play on Blackfire and then you come, and then you come back to here and watch that episode and hopefully you guys will go and watch all their content they might come over here and watch our content and so on and so forth and um, yeah we'll all bring the world together and so on and so forth that's the basic plan um, it's kind of like having a pen pal but without the pen um, yeah and, and we, we sort of like, it's, it's kind of like you know postal chess where like I move and then send it to you and then you move so yeah, postal chess is probably the closest analogy, but without the chess and the post. But other than that, it's spot on. Um, so yeah, that's the idea. I hope you like it. Uh, please let us know in the comments whether this is insane or whether it's quite good fun. And what I would recommend you do now is go and watch um, round. This is on Blackfire Productions um, YouTube channel. That's Blackfire with a Y, by the way. Um, as in F Y R E, not like you know F, not Y at the start of Blackfire or anything. Um, go and watch their roundtable discussions, Ep fourteen, episode fourteen, Taylor's hobby vlog. Um, it was published. It was published today. It was published on the twenty seventh. Um, go and watch that. It's twenty minutes long, and then um, pop back up here, and we'll kind of that's the pilot episode we said, and then we'll kind of respond to it on here. That's the idea, I guess. Um, and we're going to try and keep these videos to about somewhere between 20 minutes and half an hour, I think is the plan. So we'll, uh, we'll see. There we go. Hooray. Let's crack on. So, um, I, very importantly, uh, I have no idea if I can paint and talk at the same time. I've never done this. It feels incredibly weird to me. Um, Taylor was saying that he likes uh, paint, painting and talking to people. I think that's all right. Um, yeah, if there's another human being there, but the idea of doing it um, and just talking to a camera and not even looking at the camera is kind of bizarre to me. So uh, I have no idea how well this is going to go, and if it's awful content, I apologise. But what I'd recommend that you do is um, go and get your own paints out. Um, there's certainly nothing exciting going on visually here uh, beyond the side of my head, which is certainly not visually exciting. Um, but um, go and get your own paints out, uh, set your stuff up, and then um, hopefully get some hobby time done whilst we get some hobby time done. Sort of have this weird situation where maybe we're all working at the same time, bizarrely, although obviously you're not working at the same time because this would have happened about 24 hours before you saw it, but hey ho. Um, we don't really know how regular these are going to be. Um, I suppose it will just depend on our own timetables. But I think we both, when we were chatting, we were both kind of committed to we could both do one of these a week, kind of as a base level. But the basic idea is we're just going to be um, doing them wherever we can, and we'll just sort of pass the uh, pass the bat each time, as it were, and then wait for the next episode. Um, Adam has kindly volunteered to to do some of them as well, so he might be getting involved. Adam Marcel, 
um, over at Platterfire. Uh, who knows, maybe some of the guys here might get involved on our end or something. But the key thing is that between every video, it has to cross the Atlantic and cross the time zone. And, um, and yeah, and then hopefully we'll all kind of maybe learn something about each other's uh, scene a bit more or about tournament structure and that sort of thing. So that's the kind of plan. So hopefully, if all goes to plan, you'll get maybe two of these videos um, every week. Uh, one of them here on the G Bishop Podcast YouTube channel and one of them over at Blackfire. So, um, Taylor said the reason he actually started doing that vlog was that he finds it quite hard to paint, um, quite hard to motivate himself and I kind of agree with that. Um, I've, I've had this thing, I think I talked about this on the planet once, of having too much to do, like too much painting to do and the result of that is that I do none of it. Like I've got a hugely insurmountable backlog and I paint very very slowly so um, it, it never feels like I'm getting anything done but my current project here is the Champions of Erebor. I'm uh, working my way through these. Uh, it feels quite sl like, quite slow going, to be honest. Um, I have currently done four, so Balin is my fifth. Um, and I basically, I do have a super secret deadline coming up for these guys. Uh, it's not until sort of February, so I've got plenty of time. But um, by, by my standards, that would probably mean I only just get them done. But um, yeah, so they're, they're the kind of next project, and of course, whilst they are great models and it is very satisfying, that's like 13 heroes you're painting, so you end up spending a lot of time on it, and then you suddenly realise three months gone past, you paint the Champions Era Ball, but it's only 13 models, which can be a bit distressing, but I'm trying to, uh, I don't know, I'm just trying to rationalise it with myself and not, not kind of stress too much about that and just sort of enjoy my painting. I am enjoying working on these models, I think they're quite good fun, it's nice to concentrate on something entirely different each time. But, um, yeah, so uh, hopefully, um, I don't know, ho I'd hope by the next time I do one of these little videos, um, Barlin will be done and maybe I'll be networking on the next one. I'll also, as a bit of an update for you guys, um, anyone who watch your podcast, you know that you voted in my next project, which was the Iron Hills Chariot. Um, and you might be surprised to see I'm not doing that, but um, I am doing it, which downstairs, because I am mid assembly with the Iron Hills Chariot. So it's now all cleaned up and all kind of put together in its uh, sub-assemblies ready to be painted but the last thing I need to do to it is uh, magnetise it so I'm going to magnetise the uh, crew on so I'm magnetising the uh, driver and the captain so that I can swap the captain out but I'm also magnetising all the other crew so that um, I can hopefully maybe in the future there'll be a, a, a my guess is there might be a Champions Variable upgrade kit I reckon I don't necessarily think they'd come in a Champions Variable chariot, it would be different. I think they'll just be a kind of blister pack that you buy and put on there. So, hopefully I'll have two chariots in my life at some point. But my kind of, it sort of makes sense to me to be able to um, swap them in and out. And even if I do ever end up with two chariots, um, it would still be nice to have the option to have two normal Iron Hills chariots. So by magnetising the crew, that allows me to uh, kind of get around that uh, issue, I guess. So yeah, those are kind of my hobby projects, so please don't be angry with me for working my way through the Champions of Erebor when I, when I said I would be doing the Chariot, because I promise you, I am doing the Chariot as well. I'm um, just doing a bit of dry brushing now on uh, Balin's Chainmail, it's going to bring that up and do that messy work before I get on with all the other bits. So yes, there we go. Um, so in his, um, hopefully you've seen uh, Taylor's video by now. In his video, he was talking about like the upcoming events that they were going to, um, which was quite cool. And the first one he mentions, I think, I think it's now gone because I think he recorded that last Friday. But Don Barnett, um, lovely, lovely guy, another Canadian we met at Nova, um, who's an absolutely top bloke. Um, he was running an event, so I hope that went well. I think um, Taylor's painting up some ruffians for that, so that's quite exciting. Um, he, need, he said he needed ruffians, so I don't know if that's that was for his army at the event or if maybe there was a special rule about the um, about using ruffians at it but uh, yeah he was working on those while he was doing his little uh, sit and talk or I should say the, the pilot episode of uh, the two time zones so um, yeah he then was off to which one was it then was it his event then I think called the Great River that he was running um, 
Or was that after? No, I think it was the it was the Ontario Hobbit Adventures guys, wasn't it? So um, Jason from um, these guys again, as I said, Ontario Hobbit Adventures. Make sure you go and check them out and give them a watch. Um, they're running an event called the Scouring of the West Farthing, um, which uh, they've got a couple of videos up there, and that looks like a really really cool event now. What's kind of interesting about that is I, I love listening to um, Pints and Paints or Paints and Pints. I'm going to remember which way around it is. It is Pints and Paints. I really enjoy listening to that uh, show. Um, just I like the way Jason does it. And he was talking, he's done two videos about this upcoming event, uh, Scouring of the West Farthen. And I really wanted to go. I know it's mad, but I tend to listen to these videos when I'm, um, when I'm in the kitchen, kind of cleaning the kitchen and, uh, before I go to bed. And I was listening to it, and it just sounds so cool. So they're having this, um, they're having this kind of themed event. It sounds like it's being held in a hotel. And um, yeah, he was just Jason's so good at talking about what the Ontario Hobbit Adventures do, which is just um, put theme and fun right at the forefront. And that's what they're going for. So they're going to. It sounds like they're going to have some really, really cool, uh, interesting boards there. Um, where he was like, these are going to trip you up competitively, but that's the point. They're almost meant to be more fun than they are fair, I guess. Um, and then he was saying how on Saturday night they were all going to, I think, go back to his and have a big bonfire and stuff. And it just sounded like a really, really cool event. And there was this tiny part of me that, obviously, you, you can temporarily forget these guys are on the other side of the world and they're just running an event. And I was going, oh, that sounds pretty good. Maybe, maybe I'll go to that. And then I kind of had to think, no, I, I probably won't go to Canada for a weekend tournament. I mean, I might, I might suggest it to him. It's a pretty, uh, it could be a tough sell for anyone, uh, I don't know, do I have to introduce the cast? That's weird, isn't it? Um, for anyone who might not know, Emma is my wife, um, particularly if there's any Blackfire Productions fans, I guess, watching this. Um, Emma's my lovely wife, um, who's very, very understanding about this sort of thing, but whether or not uh, I could nip over to Canada for a bit, I don't know. But um, I'm sure she'd like a holiday to Canada, that'd be alright, but whether or not we can arrange it at this kind of late notice and uh, nip over there is a probably another matter entirely, but it's, it's one of those bizarre things, I was like, yeah, I could go to that, and then, no, I, I probably can't go to that. But, um, yeah, there was just something about the way Jason was talking about it with such um, passion and interest and an obvious love for the hobby that just made me, and they're really excited, so fingers crossed that goes really well for you, Jason. I think that's um, it's in a couple of weeks' time, I think. Um, I'm sure we'll be talking about it a lot on Pints and Paints, and um, I look forward to the updates on that. He's also giving away a board. Um, a 4x4 board that he's done, this kind of snowboard, which looks incredibly cool. You'll, you'll see little snippets of that on his YouTube channel. And um, not, he, was, he was very excited, sort of, um, sort of saying that he, he wasn't aware of anyone doing this before. Now, I don't want to kind of poo-poo over those dreams. Can we say poo-poo? I don't know. It's probably too late. I've said it twice now. Um, but uh, our, our very own GHL Steve, Cool Steve of uh, Top Table Wargaming as well, um, uh, his event, the Scouring Cheshire's, uh, Scourings of Cheshire, I suppose, multiple events. Um, he actually gives away a board. Uh, well, he certainly did the first year. I went, I went to the first year and he gave away. I think it was like a Dead Marshes board, I think it was, or Fornos or something like that. And he gave the whole thing away. Um, and I think he did it again this year. I wasn't able to make it to his event this year, unfortunately. But um, I think he did do it again. So uh, there is Preston, but it's a very, very rare Preston, Jason. So uh, I think. Over here in the whole of GHL, it's only ever happened with Steve because um, people aren't normally willing to give away boards. So it's a very, very generous uh, offer of you to do that, and uh, I'm sure whoever gets that board will be very, very lucky. Um, so yeah, he had that coming up, that event coming up. I know uh, Jason was very excited to get a lot of um, a lot of the kind of OSGB OSBGL. That's right, isn't it? Guys up there. So for any of you guys who don't know, uh, the Canadian League is the OSBGL, which is Ontario Strategy Battle Gaming League. Obviously, um, what is the kind of main Canadian league? It's largely for people based around the Ontario area. And um, yeah, so he's got those guys. I think I, I don't really know because Canada's massive, isn't it? I think maybe they actually live quite far away from each other. Those guys. So he was quite excited to find that some of the uh, so the big names from the Canadian scene are uh, going along. So I think, I'm not entirely sure. I think Adam's going. I think Don's going. Is is Andrew going? Is Drew going? Brock, Garrett, maybe. I think. So it um, sounds like he's going to have a great event there. I think Taylor's obviously going along. Um, 
So yeah, and then uh, Taylor was then running his own event um, called The Great River, which sounds uh, really cool. He's putting on a 500 point event. So good luck to you there, sir. Um, so I thought it would only be right if we then talked about a couple of our events, kind of what we got coming up essentially. And I'm very excited because only very recently I found out I'm going to Stockport in Flames. And Stockport in Flames, um, for most of you who won't know, is a doubles tournament put on by uh, GHL Jamie, Jamie Gibbon, and um, Harry Moore, GHL Harry. They're running their, their inaugural event, running it together at the Element Games Northwest Games Centre, is that what it's called now? Um, and it's a weekend, and it's an 80 point event, and it's doubles, and until about three days ago, I didn't think I was going, because it's quite a long way away, and I certainly get to less events now with having a, having a baby. Again, for the anyone who might not have been on this channel before, I've got a little six month old girl called Charlotte, and um, she's called Charlotte Arwen for bonus nerd points. And um, I didn't think I'd be able to get to it, because Stockport is about a three and a half hour drive from me, which I'm sure that a lot of the Canadians are kind of turning their noses up going, that's absolutely nothing. Um, some of those guys have to travel sort of eight hours to get to their local tournaments and that sort of thing. But um, it's a fairly big drive for us relatively. So I wasn't going to make it to that one. And then M, M basically just kind of was like, no, no, it's cool, like go. Which was quite happy to get rid of me, to be honest. Who wouldn't be? Um, and she was just like, no, go along to it. So. Uh, thankfully there was still space and I signed up but of course it was doubles and the thing about doubles is you need a partner and so I obviously went to my erstwhile companion Mr uh, Thomas Harrison and quite bizarrely he had no plans to go but he was also free so he was well up for it so myself and Tom are taking GBHL South Team Palantir uh, north of the border like you know the border being Watford and um, going to war in the north, which is quite exciting. Um, so we're going to be going up there. That's in it's October twenty first. So I think it's I think it's kind of three and a half weeks away. We'll be going three weeks Friday. Uh, Tom, as anyone who will notice the absence of the plant here will surely know, has been away. He's been in Zurich on work, and then he's in um, was he in the Lake District somewhere like that. I think uh, he likes to go up mountains. Does Tom? And he um, he goes to places where he doesn't have any signal, so I don't hear or hear from him for about a week or something. And um, so he's he's currently up there somewhere. And but we have a ticket. Every now and again, he gets to the top of a really good hill, and we um, he'll send me a text or a Facebook message or something saying, "Tell me everything." Um, so we've done that, and I've booked the hotel. We're staying at the uh, local Premier Inn. We're not staying at the infamous Britannia, the Hotel of Doom, that's very close by. Um, I'm kind of curious what the Canadians do, like Taylor, and this bounces back to you. What, what's your level of accommodation when you go and stay in like, uh, tournaments? Because I think us here, there's almost a kind of self deprecating, no, no, not self deprecating, self, self harm, is it potentially? <laughs> um, where we don't necessarily stay in the nicest establishments, and there's almost a rustic charm to stay, staying in some of these kind of run-down B&Bs around the place. But um, I think maybe that's changing, the Britannia pushed it a little too far. Um, so for the first time ever, I haven't actually been to Stockport um, in about a year and a half I think. We always used to stay at the Britannia but I think everyone's kind of moved on a bit from then. Everyone's like a little little bit older and they're not quite up for staying in the, uh, in the little dump that was the Britannia. <laughs> so uh, we'll be staying in the Premier Inn. Um, the tournament is 450 points um, each, which is quite cool, and you have to take it from a single list. Uh, me and Tom haven't remotely talked about armies. I've got absolutely no clue. Um, a sensible guess would probably be that we'll take um, Gundabad, I reckon, because we've both got Gundabad armies, and I've painted up loads of Gundabad stuff recently, some of the big beasties, so I don't know, maybe we'll take... Um, Maybe we'll take a couple of trolls along and have another kill competition between them. I really, I really want to take Stumpy. The other option, of course, depends on me getting something painted. And seeing as I never get anything painted, it's probably quite unlikely. But if I get the Iron Hills Chariot done, um, I'd like to, I'd like to take that. Um, anyone who follows the Jewish YouTube channel um, will know that I've been doing this series of infrequent um, 
unboxing and hobby vlogs where I basically take a, take a product or a model, a kit from the box and kind of assemble it, clean it up, paint it and then take it for a bunch of games and talk about the profile at the end. And um, I'm doing that for the Iron Hills Chariot so I'm making one of those videos and obviously at the end we talk about the profile and that's normally based on having used it in a bunch of games. And um, obviously, where's my stirring stick? When you lose your stirring stick, it's an absolute nightmare. And um, obviously, to talk with that experience, I need to have played it in a bunch of games. So if I do finish it, I think I'll probably take it to that tournament. Um, God knows what we'll team up with for that. We'll, we'll always want to do something thematic, I think, myself and Tom. Um, but that is the that chariot is the only Iron Hills model I've got painted. So. And you have to take it from a single list. Um, so whether or not I even can take it, I don't know because um, I'll have a couple of the Champions of Erebor done. But is, are the chariots in Erebor reclaimed? I honestly don't know. If my voice has slowed down, it's because I'm currently painting Barlin's eyes, and I'm fairly awful at painting, so it doesn't go well. <laughs> um, are the chariots in Erebor reclaimed? Because if they are. I could take a chariot, a chariot and um, an Iron Hills captain on it is about 250 points, which is equal to 200. And I've got Nori, Dori, Bomber, and potentially Barlin. Obviously, the four champions you would pick to take. So I might take them along. I've also got Bilbo, Master Burglar. Maybe I'll take that. Is he in Erebor Reclaimed? No, maybe he's not. Um, but yeah, so it's not. I don't think it's going to be a great list, if I'm brutally honest. Um, but. Who knows, but I'd really, really want to use the chariot. Um, but let's all face it, I'm probably not going to have the chariot painted anyway, so it's not really it's not really an issue. Um, but yeah, that's the kind of hope. So I reckon my, maybe myself and Tom, we take in kind of 900 points of Gundabad long and just um, have a bit of a laugh with that, because I really, really enjoy using that army. It'll also really take the stress off for me, because... I won't have to paint anything in advance, which is a, always a fairly appealing part of a project. I'm just trying to work out whether this bit on ball in it is his ear or his hair. I've got uh, a couple of pictures up here, I've shown them. I've got one from Kev, oh that's interesting, so GW have painted a bit of hair and Kev has painted it as his skin. Ay ay ay. Why didn't I build an Orlando? I think it's skin. I think I'm going to go with Kev. Um, da -da -da. So, yeah, that's the uh, that's the plan. I'll take something uh, something Gundabadi along and use it for the for the fun of it. There's some really cool prizes. Um, there's like some stings for the winner. Uh, a lot of replica sting swords. God, I'm, I'm really glad you can't see this because this is good putting his beard at the moment and it's going terribly badly. But, uh, that's all right, so the first coat will uh, I'll tidy that up with some uh, shading later. Uh, there's also the, I think it's the Art of the Lord of the Rings book for uh, for the best painted. Uh, there's some pop vinyl Gandalfs for some prize or other. That's what I really want. Really, really want the pop vinyl Gandalf. I love pop vinyls. Can you see them up there? Are they here? You see? No, you can't. They're all cropped out. Why don't, why don't we have a tour? We have Sam Ganji. We have the Dark God Sauron. Come on, love. Cheer up. There you go. I'll do. We have Invisible Frodo. Do -do 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 -do. And we have everybody's favourite. Nope. Oh. Tariel. Oz. And can you even see. Is in there? Cheeky little smelk. Pull up. Pop out. <laughs> pop out. Pop vinyl. Great stuff. Pop vinyl smelk. There he is. Um, so I'm a big fan of them. So if I can, I don't even know how you win that. Is it maybe second or third place? Maybe it's most sporting. Won't have a chance winning most sporting. I've got Tom on my team and everyone's on to him by now. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll have to wait and see. Um, but I hope if we can somehow come away with that, that'd be awesome. But um, as ever at these things, it's never about the prizes, uh, it's about, about the fun and uh, it's about winning isn't it, let's face it, it's about winning all your games and crushing all for you at uh, the expense of everything, I jest. Um, so yeah, we're, I'm quite looking forward to that.
um, should be fun. Lots of uh, names going, so a lot of lot of good mates going to that. So it'll be nice to catch up with a few people that I haven't seen in a while, which is uh, going to be awesome. So yeah, it's really nice and unexpected. So that's where I'm off to. So I think now, um, with the intro particularly, we must be at about the half hour mark, which is uh, the kind of limit I said I'd put on these. Um, that's gone incredibly quickly for me. Um, what do you think of this? Has this worked? Um, I'm going to send this back to Taylor. Um, who knows what he's up to now, but uh, I don't know when he'll do the next video, but we'll kind of link to him and we'll support each other and such. But yeah, so uh, that's what I'm up to, guys. Taylor, you know, you're up, man. Until uh, the next video then, I guess I'm going to say, don't forget to comment, like, share and subscribe. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Support your hobbit host by clicking on the links below. Um, support your hobbit hobby, happy strategy battle gaming, and as they say on Blackfire Productions, ignite your hobby. We'll see you in episode two of the two timelines. Over to Taylor. What I meant to say was, we'll see you for episode two of the two time zones. Over to Taylor.